This is the Chef United Way podcast. We'd now like to welcome a member of the Blades family. Born in Sheffield, a man who grew up supporting the club he would go on to play for with distinction. He could play anywhere across the outfield, could place or smash a penalty, never shirked a tackle. And alongside his good friend, Dame Whitehouse, he was our representative on the pitch. A fan who had the talent to make it in the red and white. It is Mitchum David Ward. How are you doing today, Mitch? I'm good, thank you. Nice to see you guys. Lovely nice to speak to you. Well, you. we're going to cover everything we possibly can, Blades related. Uh, we've already had the chance to actually speak to you earlier on in the season. You're doing that wonderful work in the executive boxes. We might touch on that yep. a bit later. And every time I'm about to talk to you, you're on the cusp of going away to play golf. So tell me you're not about to do that again. <laughs> Yes, we are. Yes, I'm away tomorrow. Uh, we're going to Mias with uh, some friends of mine. Uh, we've got five five days golfing. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I hope it's a great time. Let's yeah. go all the way back to the start before we bring in Nick. How did you come to sign with Sheffield United as a boy? Uh, it started with playing for a team called Junior Reds, at, uh, about under sevens. Uh, and then it, that carried on all the way till about about uh, under nines, under tens, and then uh, we end up uh, Sheffield United approached the manager who I used to play for at the time and asked us to uh, see if we wanted to join Junior Blades. So uh, we ended up swapping his name to Junior Blades, kept the same team, uh, and ended up uh, going through the ranks like that until I got to fifteen. Fantastic, fantastic. I nearly played for Junior Blades when I was younger. I wish I bloody did now. Might have ended up playing for Sheffield United. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think not. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. Maybe there yeah. was a, a different reason why I didn't, I didn't make it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you obviously played over 150 games for the Blades, uh, but in 1990, um, you went on loan to Crew. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, Dave Bassett asked me if I wanted to go and get more league experience uh, and asked me if I wanted to go to crew uh i didn't really want to go at the time but it was probably one of the best things i did uh it gave me a little bit more experience playing against in a lower division but i really enjoyed it and had a good time there played with likes of neil lennon uh, craig ignett rob jones were there at the time so it was a great side i uh, played great football type of football that i used to like play uh so it were a, it were a good good catch really for me and then coming back and uh I never looked back really. I ended up breaking into the first team at United, and uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a good thing I did. I enjoyed it. You mentioned there when you came back, you you broke into the first team. But under Dave Bassett, did you ever really feel like you had broken into the Blades' first team? Uh, not really. No, I was, I was always in the night. Didn't know. Didn't matter whether I played good, bad, or or whatever. You just, I just never knew whether I was going to be playing from one week to the other. You could get man of the match one week and then be left out the next week. So it was frustrating, but uh, also still enjoyable being involved in the squad as well. So, yeah, you just had to bite the bullet, to be fair. Yeah, and your boyhood team, so I'd imagine you were just happy to be out yeah. there. But you did say you could be man of the match one week and then drop the next. Let's yeah. speak about a specific one. I remember a game against Watford in the first division. You scored two goals, but next match... You were on mm. the bench. I mean, did Dave Bassett's rotation policy really bother you at that time specifically? Yeah, it frustrated the hell out of me. They <laughs> <laughs> uh, say we score two goals and don't be expected to be uh, left out the next game, but he had his reasons, you know. I didn't obviously agree with him at the time, but uh, like I say, when it's your home club and you just knuckle down and get your head down and you hope that uh, you can prove him wrong at the uh, on the, on the next game that you selected him. So that's all I ever did. Yeah, you were you were a really versatile player. Um, and and was that more of a curse than a gift sometimes, playing in lots of different positions? Yeah, it had its benefits, you know. Uh, like say, when we had injuries at the time, and like I said, the squads weren't as big as what they are in our days. Uh, so it did work work for me at the time. If lads were injured, you know, I'd, I'd end up moving over to, well, I could have been left back, left wing. Uh, you know, I played everywhere but in the net. So, yeah. Uh, but you'd, like you say, it's nice as a player when you get a regular position and you're getting a, a regular run at it. Uh, you do feel more comfortable and more confident as well. So, yeah, it was frustrating at the time. 
Yeah. Um, let's talk about some of the highs during your time at the Blades. Um, if you had to pick one great game out of all of them that you enjoyed the most, what would you be picking? Uh, it's a strange one, really. I, I would say the Blackburn quarterfinal one, which is a, a funny funny story, because I, I, it left me out, like you were saying. I played the week before, played really well, and it left me out for the game. I was actually on the bench that night, and one of the lads got injured early doors, and I managed to get on. And end up scoring two goals and a goal in uh, scoring a penalty as well. So uh, it was an incredible night, obviously, uh, to get through that quarter final FA Cup, which obviously took us through to the obviously the famous uh, Sheffield Derby at Wembley. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd have thought that one. It was a fantastic atmosphere that night, full house, uh, and luckily I managed to get on after about ten minutes. So um, it was it was a great night for me that. I could literally relive those kind of memories all day. Yeah. Uh, great times. And Mitch, uh, I got a little word in my ear about this, so you might have to elaborate. But all I was told was, make sure Mitch tells you about John Bailey before the team's last game of the season against Norwich before you flew <laughs> yeah. to Magaluf. Yeah, we, we, we had a game, uh, the last match of the season, we'd planned to go to Magaluf, you know, uh, <clears throat> the day after. But our, our Kendall, as he did, we always quite calm team talks before the game mentioned that he didn't want to hear, any, hear of any of us mention about the there's going to maggle off or uh, going away he wanted us to finish the game off uh, and get three points on that last match and he didn't want to hear nothing about the holiday until after the game and then John Bales walks out the staff room with his speedos on and his armbands on. <laughs> <laughs> just, as, just as he says it. So it just broke the ice and that you can imagine in the dressing room, everybody bursting out laughing, and that, that was his team talk. I and that's how it worked, you know. They, with Bales, Adrian Eve, uh, you know, uh, that that backroom staff were incredible, you know. So uh, yeah, it was it was tremendous days. Um. Brilliant, brilliant. Going into this question quite well now. Um, who were the characters in that Sheffield United? Uh, well, the time that you were there in, in the dressing room. We had quite a few, to be fair. I mean, uh, we, we had likes, so obviously, the Sheffield lads, the uh, Cole Bradshaw, Dan Whitehouse, uh, obviously, Chris Wilder was there, but uh, previous being previous manager, Jamie Oyland, they were all the Sheffield lads sort of thing. Uh, and then, obviously, you had the, the other guys, uh, Blake, you know, uh, John Gannon, Trace, Glenn Hodges. Uh, we had a fantastic bunch, uh, and, we, and we just we just clicked as a, as a group, to be fair. Uh, it was just good times, uh, and we all looked after one another on and off the pitch as well. We had such a camaraderie off it, on it. You know, it, we we were a fantastic squad. To be fair, yeah, I'll second so, that. So the so Northerners and Southerners, it seems. Yeah, yeah. It took some time. <laughs> it took some time to uh, bed in, but obviously we had to put his foot down him a few times uh, in training and. Uh, uh, end of season tours. We had us, we had us roused. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's let's just touch on that end of season tours. I mean, there's yeah. bound to be some stories because you went to some bizarre places. Yeah, well, I mean, God, oh my God, I remember once where we, we I think we we're only going to through Engerola. That's where I'm not far from there tomorrow, uh, and we we ended up getting thrown off plane one year. <laughs> Hopefully not while <laughs> yeah, I was travelling. Yeah, it split us up. Uh, in two groups and Derek French the physio had one group which was supposed to have been the the the, the well behaved lads and uh, and Dave Bassett took the other group and uh, I think I think myself uh, Billy White <laughs> John Barnes uh, uh, John Greaves we all ended up getting thrown off the plane because Billy decided to do a team talk on the on the screen on the aeroplane which the captain weren't too happy about so we ended up getting thrown off the plane <laughs> I said, I didn't I remember reading somewhere that you went you went somewhere else bizarre. I can't remember exactly where it was in the Middle East. It might have been or Kuwait or Iran yeah. or somewhere like that. Did you go somewhere like that? Yeah, that was with uh, Howard Kendall. That was with Howard Kendall. Yeah, we went there with uh, with Busby and Adrian Eve, uh, the chairman Charles Green and Mike McDonald came out with us as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was good. It was a fantastic tour. To be fair. Brilliant. Where was really it exactly it. that you went? It was like uh, towards Dubai that way, uh, and we we did we played a few teams around there, uh, and it was we did about three three tours around there and all in small areas, 
small cities around there and uh, it was a fantastic tour. Too hot yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, too hot. But you, you went before, you know, I would imagine everyone was going there on their holidays. You were there before it was cool. Oh, yeah. Well, without a doubt, yeah. We were, like I said, we didn't do much training there because the altitude was so hot. It was, it was incredible to, to train. We, we played at the night time. And I think it was like 100, 105 degrees at night when we played. So it was, it's, we've never ever played anything like before. So it was a new experience for me and all the lads, to be fair. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, Nick always tells me, don't make the interviews about yourself. But I will just say, I have. Here we go. Well, it's a chance to <laughs> say I, I can relate. I have played football in over 50 degrees uh, when I was in yeah. Afghanistan and it was. Yeah. Unreal, yeah. uh, and I never want to do it again. I don't know how anyone gets no. anything done in the, no. those kind of it's difficult. Totally, totally different football. Yeah, completely totally different. Completely, it was, it was walking yeah. football when I was in my twenties. Now oh, we are yeah. <laughs> we are going to get back to Sheffield United, but let's set the record straight. I want to give you an opportunity to apologise to me uh, because that shirt there uh, was a birthday yeah. gift for me on my birthday, twenty yeah. fifth uh, of November, nineteen ninety seven. That just happens yeah. to be, Mitch, the date that you were sold to Everton. I'll, re- I'll remind you, that's on my birthday. Uh, <laughs> now, I apologise for that. <laughs> it weren't like yeah. Mitch were your favourite player or anything, was it, Hal? It wasn't like yeah. Mitch was my favourite player and I actually, I found out about it. it was the worst way possible. My geography teacher said to me, yeah. uh, he said to me at school, he's like, oh, um, oh, Sheffield have sold a couple of players. And I was like, it's Sheffield United. Mm. And as long as, <laughs> as long as one of them isn't Mitch Ward, I'm okay with it. And he went, yeah, yeah, that's it, Mitch Ward. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, it were, I mean, obviously, it were, it were a funny one for me, to be fair. I knew I had a feeling that uh, I would have, have approached me before and said that it was interested in taking me to Everton. Uh, but when it really happens, uh, it's a bit of a shock, to be fair. Uh, I think Charles Green at the time uh, couldn't wait for me to leave. He more or less pushed me out the door. But I said to him, if the things, if the contract weren't right for me and things weren't right for me, then I weren't going nowhere. But obviously, the move, he, they signed me on a four and a half year contract. And um, it, I, it was just something I couldn't turn down. Like I say, it's a short, short career. Uh, and it was, I, I got on so well with Howard Kendall for the 18 months he were at United. I just couldn't turn it down. It was just a massive move back in the Premiership. You know, it was just huge. So, yeah, it was it was, uh, a bit heartbreaking leaving United. Obviously, I left on my testimonial year as well, on my 10th year, uh, as me and Dame were both uh, were preparing for a testimonial. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a little bit to and fro. But like I said, to turn down playing back in Premiership and playing a top club like Everton, I just couldn't turn it down. I mean, I get it. It wasn't an apology, <laughs> really, was it? <laughs> yeah, I basically, to leave on your birthday. Yeah, that's 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 all I wanted, Mitch. You're basically saying <laughs> that that it was a great deal because a manager who really got the best out of you wanted to take you to a higher division and give you more money. I mean, I don't think that's really an acceptable excuse. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. hard to really disagree with No, of course it is. It's yeah. absolutely hard to disagree. Yeah. But I know, and I felt at the time, that you probably wouldn't have gone for anyone else. Yeah. No, like I said, the minute Howard came in for the first week, uh, I bonded with Howard straight away. And uh, obviously they'd done their own work before they came in. Adrian Eve and Viv Buzz had been watching us for a long time before they came in. And they know the way I, I like to play would suit, obviously, how uh, Howard's teams have always played. So, yeah, mm. it just made, made me feel so, so... It just made me feel so confident, you know, that we're going to be playing week in, week out. And it showed that I had the, probably the best 18 months I ever had at United, you know. So, yeah, it, uh, it's all we're all about the manager, to be fair. Oh, fair enough. Um, so, looking back on your time at Goodison Park, um, how did it go? Uh, okay, uh, obviously the first year I went there, uh, I, obviously uh, I went through off the season. Everton was struggling at the time, and my first game, uh, it was just weird how it happened. I ended up going down for a medical uh, down there, discussing negotiations first, and then passing my medical. Then I had to come back to Bramall Lane to get my boots and all my my stuff. Gosh, uh, send my buys to some of the people at the club. Uh, and then I travelled straight down to London uh, that night 
and end up playing at Chelsea. My first game was Chelsea away, uh, playing against oh. Mark Hughes and uh, Violi, I think, up front. So, welcome to Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> and, then my second, and then my second game was Liverpool at Anfield. I remember so that one. I'd, so, I had two crackers, two crackers to start off with. But, yeah, I loved it. I had a fantastic year. We, we, our, we stayed up. And then, uh, obviously... I would fell out with Peter Johnson at the time, who was the chairman there, and decided to let him go, uh, having promised him he would uh, give him the money to to back the team for the year after. But uh, and then obviously I, things went pear really after that. I ended up playing for Walter Smith for a while. I broke I broke my ankle, which didn't help me. I broke my ankle against Newcastle mm-hmm. at Goodison, uh, and that set me back. I missed pre season with Walter Smith, which. All players will tell you if you miss pre-season under a new manager that comes in, you uh, you're no good to anybody when you're injured. I don't care what anybody says. Well, if you're injured, you're no good to no one. Uh, and a pre-season is such a massive thing before the season starts, you know. And I missed on I missed out on that, but managed to get back in the team once I got back fit, and end up playing about uh, thirty odd games for Walter, uh, you know. And uh, uh, I was in and out the side again and. Uh, and just decided that I, I wanted first team football. I was at that age where I was playing in and out. Uh, there was an interest again from Dave Bassett wanting to take me back to Barnsley. Uh, but I had about two and a half years, uh, nearly three years at Everton. So I enjoyed my time there, but I wanted to be playing and I weren't playing. And then players will tell you it weren't about the money for me. I, I wanted to I wanted to be playing. Uh, my whole week were built up to play on a Saturday, not on a Thursday night at some empty ground, you know, in the reserves. So, yeah, I wanted to play. Absolutely. And I remember at the time when Howard left and Walter came in and Walter had his favourites like Alec Cleland, who was yeah. playing the yeah. same position as you. That's tough. Yeah, yeah, Alex Cleland. I mean, it was a funny one for Alex because Alex got released by Walter and he came to Everton, you know. And then Walter followed him, so he had a bit of a mare with that one. But, uh, but I but thought no, he liked him. I, I assumed he'd liked him. But I didn't know that. Yeah. I never fell out with Walter. You know, he uh, was a great guy. He was, he was spot on with me. Uh, but it was a new manager. He didn't really want... And no managers that come in. They want their own players. And uh, I think there was only probably me and uh, Don Hutchinson uh, left in the Howard squad by the time he'd done uh, like all this fallen revolution came in and uh, you know quite a lot of Scottish lads came in uh, and they just wanted their own players it was nothing to do with me it was just uh, he, he wanted his own men and I discussed had a chat with him and it was fine with me it could have been funny with me it could have been awkward with me and made me train with uh, the young lads or whatever but he didn't he made me feel involved with the squad and uh, and he said, if anything comes up for you, then I won't stop you, which I couldn't ask for no more than that, to be honest. Yeah, that's fair. And that's all you ever want from a manager. Mitch, you yeah. played under three very different managers with incredible CVs. Yeah. We'll just yeah. say their names. And you please tell us a little story, a memory or an overall experience about each. Let's start with Dave Bassett. Oh, Dave Bassett, obviously. He, he, he just knew how to get the best out of players. You know, he do a no... Uh, no short corners with him. He 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 go deep on you if he wanted to to get the best out of you. He did a nerve, but that's how he was, you know. Uh, I remember once him dragging me in one day, one day, uh, and telling me how how bad I was, and he were thinking of getting re- releasing me and this that and other. And he ended up playing me on the Saturday. Uh, he said I'm going to play on the Saturday, though, but I've been thinking of getting rid of you. And that and I walked out of the room and scratched my head and thinking. What the bloody hell's he just told me I'm crap for? But he's playing me on Saturday, and I thought, right, I'll show him, and end up going out and uh, scoring a goal on Saturday, and we won three three nil. And then afterwards, I'm thinking that's why he, that's why he's done it, you know. Tremendous man management from him, you know. That's that's what he will like. Was it? Do you think when you look back at it now, it was all that scratching your head with Dave Bassett that the reason you don't have quite the same head of hair? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, probably. there's I'll, no need for I'll, that. I'll, I'll get him married and having kids. Up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, while we're talking about Dave Bassett, you know, you obviously went back to to work with him at Barnsley. Was there ever like a yeah. bit of trepidation? You thinking you might do the same to me again? You might drop me. You might pick me. You yeah. might drop me again. No, when I, it was totally different. When I when I when I'd been uh, gone back from obviously Everton, went back to I'd spoke to him, 
and we had a good chat about what what I'm mean for. I signed. I said, look, I don't want the same as what we happened at United. If I'm coming, I want to be playing regular football. And he said, yeah, definitely. Uh, he said you'll be vice captain at the club, and Chris Morgan was uh, captain at the time, local boy. I said, yeah, that's fine, no problem. And yeah, there were a different feeling about it. There were diff- I think Dave was a different manager then as well to what he was at United. It, it was a different style of football. They had different players, so he had to adapt himself. He changed himself because we had likes of Neil Shipley there, Bruce Dyer. You know, there were good footballers there at the time, Craig Igner. All footballers, not not uh, physical, running into channels, you know. It was it tidy, good football. So, yeah, it was totally different. Some Lots names of- in there. Lots of ex blades. I was just thinking that in there as well. Bruce Dye, Chris yeah. Morgan, Neil yeah. Shipperley. Yeah, I know. Yeah, when you look back, when they end up moving on, and all went on to play for United. So uh, I pushed them that way. That's that. <laughs> yeah, top man. I play that. I say it's a good club. All, home play. <laughs> all, all, all decent players as well. All I had, um, yeah. had good times at Sheffield United. So yeah, thank mm. you for that, Mitch. We appreciate Agent that. Ward. Yeah, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's give you another name. While we're talking about Barnsley, another manager who managed both the Blades and Barnsley. Uh, what was it like working with Nigel Spackman? Yeah, it's a strange one, really, because obviously uh, I would brought him in as a player at the time uh, um, and put him amongst the staff at United as well. But uh, yeah, he, 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 I'd, I felt like I'd know him as a player, you know, and I knew him as a person. And again, when he, when he took over at Barnsley... Uh, I got on great with Nigel. I didn't have a problem with him at all. Uh, and he appreciated it. Obviously, he'd seen me play for United under Howard. And he knew what I could do. So, yeah, yeah we, we it, it worked perfect, to be honest. Yeah, so um, what are your memories of Howard Kendall? Obviously, we've spoken about him a little bit. Um, and you got on with him really well. Um, anything else to add? Yeah, he was just a fantastic, not just a manager, a fantastic guy as well. Great uh, person. You know, great man manager. Uh, I never often you saw him lose his rag. Not it was totally different to to Dave Bassett. He, I would just he just have to look at you, and you knew that you'd not performed, or he'd just say, "Come and see me Monday morning, and explain why you played so badly or whatever." So he made you stew on it over a weekend. He'd ruin your weekend, <laughs> but um, <laughs> he was different with it. He, he had a bit of a bit of class about him, and he knew. He obviously been he, he's managed world class players all his his career. So, but just a totally different uh, setup to how we played. The training totally changed. Short sided games, everything short, quick, fast. All all football sessions, uh, you know, everything was running with a ball, never without a ball. The ball was involved all the time. Things just changed, and it and it and it were it were perfect for me. Absolutely perfect. Just a perfect guy. Perfect backroom staff. They all joined in training every day with us. That's Adrian Eve, Busby, you know, Bales, you know, the gaffer himself. And you respected them because you could tell that they'd all played the game. And if someone tells you to do something and they can do it, then you respect them a bit more. So did it ever look like you were going to return back to Bramall Lane then, Mitch? Yeah, there were there were a time where I nearly came back and I, I was trying to get back, and that was under Adrian Eve. I was uh, I was at Everton, and <clears throat> Adrian Eve had made an inquiry over me about uh, to Walter Smith. Walter Smith told me that they were an interest in him, and for some reason I don't know if it got stopped from somebody above Adrian or what, but it just didn't quite happen. And I know Dave Bassett was interested in me taking me to Barnes's, but I was, if I'm honest, I was hanging fire. Until United, United had approached me, I'd, I'd have loved, I'd have absolutely loved to have come back and, and had another run at United, and probably see my career out there. To be honest, don't Hal. say these things. How does that make you feel, Hal? Honestly, yeah. I want to, I want to cry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know who it was. I never found out who it was, and I love to have found out who blocked it. But uh, yeah, it's something from United side. Uh, decided they didn't want to go ahead with it. I don't know, but uh, I was gutted. <laughs> you know, Hell, you could have been a Barnsley fan, couldn't you? You could have gone and watched Barnsley instead. Well, I did, I did the next best thing, Nick, because as you know, I lived in York and uh, I decided when Mitch went to York, I would sponsor him for the yeah. season. And that's exactly where we are next. York City came, your final yeah. club, a good season yeah. for you personally. I yeah. thought you, you played very well. You were, you were then a central midfielder, as I believe you have been at Barnsley. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I never got your match shirt or anything, uh, so <laughs> we need to talk about why you left so abruptly. 
Yeah, just to be honest, when I went there, I, I, I was I was poor thinking whether to retire or not, and it was it was actually Paul Paul Stancliffe, obviously an old ex United Legend. player. Uh, yeah, uh, and Paul asked me if I do you want to come and do a year at uh, York. I said, look, I, I'll come. But obviously, I can't train every day. I'm not. I, I'd have to, to obviously play it game by game, sort of thing, because I was struggling with my ankle at the time. And they were they were brilliant with me. Chris Brass, Lee Norgan, who was there at the time, they just said, "Yeah, come along." And I went there for a couple of weeks. I thought I'll just go and train there for a bit and see how it feels. And I was fine. My ankle was standing up, and you know, uh, and decided to sign for a year. I just signed a year with them and said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll see how it goes." And I loved it. I actually loved it. It, it was fine. There were like the John Park in there as well, who had been at Barnsley uh -huh. with me as well. So. Yeah, there were. It, I enjoyed it, but I ended up just leaving in the end. Uh, I had a bit of a. I was struggling with my ankle towards the end of the season, and uh, I, I just, I just didn't want to be sat on the bench or playing odd games and not being able to train. I got frustrated, to be honest, and ended up just end up telling Chris I, I wanted to, I wanted to leave, to be honest. So I can't believe, Mitch. Top of your list wasn't the McGill family going. Listen, I am going to leave just before the end of the <laughs> season. But the number one thing is that lovely young man who sponsored me. Make sure he gets this signed shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chair, actually, the chairman was fantastic with me. He was brilliant. He was really good, and and I, and I just said to him, "Look, I'm, I'm really struggling uh, to." to perform on on the Saturdays as well. Now I started getting pains in my ankle. I could play, but it was the day after. It was the reaction mm. day after. I, I struggled so bad and I, I just said, I'm going to have to call it a day. So, um, uh, and it, it, it was the best thing I did, to be fair. But I end up, uh, my ankles would have been worse than what they are now. <laughs> so you're wanting, to, you're wanting him to play on just for a shirt help? That's that's a horrible <laughs> your favorite player and you're wanting that to happen so I mean yeah. I, I did not say yeah. that. All I was saying There's was no... <laughs> as Mitch decided actually, yeah, to end it earlier. <laughs> yeah, I actually don't know what happened to my Yorkshires. I don't think I actually collected them at end. There's only one two I never got. Do you know what? Knowing York and the cash strap situation they were in, they probably just signed other players with the surname Ward and just <laughs> yeah. gave them the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I never got it. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to hear the end of this. I've heard this story, Mitch, about four or five times already. <laughs> uh, so um, I think I've got, I've got an inkling here, Mitch. Um, but throughout your entire career, who yeah. is your favourite manager to have worked under? Yeah, I think you've nailed it. I think Howard was the best I've, I've ever worked under, without a doubt. No question. Yeah, had to be. I think that the form we saw you in 96-97 yeah. was... Yeah was Mitch Ward. And I think if you'd been given opportunity to regularly play, let's say Howard had been your manager for longer or, the, or that Dave had seen you in that position because you were playing right back or right wing, you were taking all the penalties and you were just on fire that season. Yeah, I just, I think, uh, obviously, I got a uh, connection with, uh, it was uh, Chris Short there, as a, a right back at the time as well. There were David White, Chris Short, you know, Baboskis came in as well uh, later on, uh, but yeah, he's. Uh, I just had. I just felt so comfortable in the way we played, and uh, it was definitely the best eighteen months I'd, I'd had at United. And I was on top of my game then, and I, like I say, it, it's, it, it worked in my favour. To be fair, yeah, I ended up getting a move to one of the big clubs, so which I've always, I always wanted to try and do. You know, try and get back in the Premiership, uh, whether it had been with United or. Moving on, and I managed to do that, and it's uh, it's worked, it worked out fantastic for me. All right, so Hal's weird question time. You had a celebration with Don Hutchison, which I'll just try and do now. Which was, hang on, what was all that about? Yeah. I've no idea. <laughs> do you remember it though? <laughs> no idea. I think it was just a moment, a uh, uh, spur of the moment. I think Don used to do some strange things when we scored goals, so I don't know. You know, it's like when you, if you when you score a goal, it's uh, you do silly things. So yeah, I have no idea. Well, it's weird because you did it. You did it more than once. I thought there must be something. Yeah. There must be something in this. All right, yeah. we'll talk about goal celebrations. You created the uh, Ronaldo Cristiano Ronaldo celebration without you even knowing that goal you scored yeah. against Ipswich with your left foot, where you just volley smashed it in. 
you ran yeah. away and you kind of turned around and pointed to the back yeah. of your shirt and then you, your arms down by your side. Uh, yeah. Ronaldo, obviously inspired by Mitch Ward, fact. Yeah, I, I can't believe you remember that. I even I'd forgot about that goal. <laughs> Mitch, number Mitch. one fan. Number one <laughs> fan. Mitch, I could, I could literally describe every one of your goals, mate. Right? I forgot about that one, yeah, I remember that, yeah. He's, uh, He's going to be getting I a restraining order I, after this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was just trying to prove a point. I think it was, um, oh, I can't remember the, the system manager at the time uh, with, with Nigel at the time, Nigel Spackman. Was it Dean? John Dean? Oh, not John Dean. No, it was. Uh, Help me, Nick. It was. Uh, this is your oh, era as well, mate. Yeah. You're in with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't remember him. He's, he used to work under Joe Royal. Joe Royal's assistant. Oh, yeah. F- uh, Derek Fitzsack. Not for exactly. It was the other one. Oh, no, help. no, I can't get his name. <laughs> I'm only. I'm going to leave you with one there. Thanks. Mitch. He's worked under Joe Royal for years. I can't remember his name. We'll now. figure that out. Well, you didn't like yeah. him. Is that where this is going? <laughs> no, it was a bit of an argument before the game. Before the game, I think it was before the game. Something in a warm up or something. And I ended up scoring a goal, uh, and I was pointing at him. To be fair, <laughs> Will, Willie, <laughs> Willie Donahue. That's it, Willie Donahue. Oh, Willie yeah. Donahue. Nice. Yeah, I was yes. pointing at my shirt to him, so uh, just to prove a point. <laughs> it, it would have worked better. I think it was the days before names on the back of the shirt. So I think you're just pointing at yeah. fourteen. <laughs> yeah. Pointing, yeah. going sub. <laughs> well, uh, but as I've just asked you about that goal, and um, we are going to let you go in a moment for a number of reasons, but one of the main ones is uh, that goal against Ipswich. Absolutely fantastic goal. But do you have a favourite goal or one goal that you scored in your whole career? Uh, I would probably say uh, the I would I would probably say my second goal in the quarterfinal FA Cup. I think against I think Blackburn. that was yeah against Blackburn. Yeah, I think that's my probably not the sweetest of strikes, but just the, it was such an important goal to get us back in the game. It got us back at two two to take us into extra time. So, yeah, uh, I think that one probably the best one I've scored. Probably one of the best atmospheres at Bramall Lane for a long, long time, that game. Absolutely was. What are you up to these days, mate? Uh, we're working uh, with my brother-in-law at the moment. Uh, we're doing uh, resin, resin-bound drives and stuff like that. Uh, oh, I need my drive done. Decorative stuff. Uh, yeah, so it's been okay, yeah. Started off helping him out and just doing a bit for him and then ended up... Uh, Going nearly full time with him, so <laughs> fantastic. And it you pays do the, for the golfing holidays well, it pays anyway. For the golf, it? as does the executive yeah. box work as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it sound like I say I was good at games anyway. It would date with Carl Bradshaw that got me on board with that. Uh, he's I used to go to games with my dad and watch the games, and he said, "Do you want to get involved doing corporate?" And uh, I give it a go and uh, it's been good it's been good I enjoy it it's different uh, we end up we were able to watch the game which is good at first we weren't watching the game which frustrated me now I'm enjoying it uh, it's my second year doing it. obviously we had the break with the Covid and stuff but uh, yeah everything's getting back to normal brilliant well Mitch Ward we've really enjoyed this uh, all you need to do now is obviously source me a signed York City shirt from uh... <laughs> <laughs> don't worry <laughs> Contact Mr. Gill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do something. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you again, Nick and I, because it's been great catching up with you whenever we have yeah. at uh, beautiful downtown Bramall Lane. Thanks again. No problem. Thank you, lads. Thanks, mate.